Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to this series where we're getting to know some of the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet. May Allah be pleased with them all, especially those that we're not too familiar with. And we're continuing today with Umm Sulaim. Anha, one of the women around the Messenger وسلم, She has an amazing story, right? Firstly, Umm Sulaim, who was she? Some scholars say that her name was Rumaysa, right? And she was actually one of the first women to accept Islam, right, in Medina. So of course, she's not from Mecca. This is after the Muslims migrated to Medina or just before that. She accepted Islam wholeheartedly, right? So this already puts her status up. Right. She is also the mother of a famous companion. Now, this companion, if I say his name, a lot of you already know. Uh, he goes by the name of Anas bin Malik. Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu uh, You may know him because he's actually one of the top narrators of hadith from the Prophet, وسلم, right? Very famous. And that's his mother. Now, why? where did this connection come from? You know, his relationship with the Prophet, uh, one thing that we know is that Umm Sulaim, radiallahu once the Prophet ﷺ, he migrated to Medina and he settled in Medina, Umm Sulaim came with her 10 year old son, Anas an, and said that, look, my son, he is ready to help you around the house. Whatever you need, basically, he will, he will be with you. You can be his guide, his mentor, and he's someone that is ready to serve you and do whatever you need to be done. So he spent 10 years with the Prophet ﷺ, right? From the age of 10 to 20, just basically tailing him, right? Being in his company. And whenever the Prophet needed something, just to help him out, right? And that was just some valuable, time that, that Anas spent those 10 years. And he himself says, by the way, that in those 10 years that I spent with the Messenger of Allah وسلم, I never once heard him rebuke me or say something bad or criticize. You know, children can make mistakes and they might, you know, uh, spill some water, spill some tea or something, you know. Prophet never, you know, rebuked him, never said anything bad to him. He says 10 years went by, right? So this shows Umm Sulaim, his mother, right, really raised him in the right manner. But there's something amazing about her marriage. So eventually she married another man because her husband, meaning the father of Anas an, passed away, right? So eventually she marries another man uh, by the name of Abu Talha al-Ansari. Abu Talha, right, at this point was not a Muslim. And something to note about Abu Talha, he was one of the most handsome of men in Medina. He was one of the richest of men in Medina as well. And he comes to Umm Sulaim and he proposes to her, right? And Umm Sulaim turns around to uh, Abu Talha and says, look, Abu Talha, a man like you, is not really rejected, right? You know, there's a lot of people that would want to marry a man like you. However, there is something that's not sitting right with me, and that is that you are not a Muslim, right? You are not a believer, right? But if you want to get married to me, then you know you accept Islam, right? You know, wholeheartedly, willingly you accept Islam, and I will accept that as my mahar. I will accept that as my dowry. I won't even ask anything else from you. But that's the only thing that you need to fulfill. And eventually Abu Talha radiallahu anh, he accepts Islam, right? And he marries Umm Sulaim. And subhanAllah, the people of Medina, they said that there was no mahar, there was no dowry that was more blessed than the dowry of Umm Sulaim radiallahu anha. Why? Because her dowry was the Islam of Abu Talha radiallahu anh. This is very unique. It's an amazing story, subhanAllah. So this is a name to note, Umm Sulaim radiallahu anha. Right, uh, so much that we can learn from her, from her son, from her family, even her husband Abu Talha. Eventually, he he became one of the most notable of companions of the Muslims. So this is a very blessed family, right? And it's one of those families that perhaps we're not really aware of. We don't know much about, but there are so many of these families from amongst the companions that we can learn and take so much from. So, inshallah, we reflect on this amazing woman, right, and her family and we take as much as we can from them and look into it more yourself as well. You know, go away, read up more, research more because there's so much to learn. So we'll end here inshallah. And before we go, don't forget this Ramadan, giving is believing.